Okay, so once again, we're off for a little bit of a ride back on uh, Tony Thunder. And uh, this time I'm using a GoPro Silver. So um, um, an older version GoPro. And I'm doing that because it doesn't have the uh, adapter in it. I want to see what the sound is like. It does not have as good of a uh, internal damping system as the uh, as the GoPro 6 does. So uh, I'm interested in trying that and uh, seeing how that works out. So we're facing forward again. It's the chin mount. It's my Bell uh, Star, my older Bell. It's not a star, I forget what it's called. Uh, and it's got the transition sun shield on it, which is really remarkable. Uh, particularly if you live in an area like San Diego or Southern California, we wake up in uh, some ocean mornings and we have what we call uh, morning gloom, sometimes referred to generally as June gloom, but it happens in more than just June. So this is a condition where the, um, just checking my uh, view ahead here, I'm gonna tilt it uh, slightly up. This is a condition where we get overcast mornings that make way for sunny afternoons. So you get on your bike and it's um, too dark for a, uh, a shaded helmet, but yet by the end of the day, the sun's out, it's very bright, it warms up usually fairly substantially, and uh, you, need, you need a shaded helmet. So, and carrying, an, of all the bulky things to carry, a uh, an extra helmet visor is, is one of the more bulky. So this is, uh, this is what's great about the uh, Transitions visor by Bell. Doesn't fit the later Bells. I have a Bell helmet with the MIPS, the Multi-Impact Protection System, which uh, supposedly is set up, sorry about that, is supposedly set up so that uh, you can absorb impacts from various directions. And the idea there is that as you impact something, you decelerate and various uh, forms of deceleration and deformation are necessary. Glancing blows deliver a different impact uh, profile than direct blows. So the safety idea behind it sounds marvelous, although I hope, truly, I never get to test it. <laughs> I don't ever want to test it. But uh, sounds good. The technology sounds good, and they are moved right along, done well. I did a little video of, oh, I think uh, before the turn of the year about my background going with bell helmets way back to my sports car racing days in the early 1970s and I still have a uh, bell full face bell helmet from that era sort of looks like a mushroom with a hole cut out of it now for the top of your head but uh, I've I've used them a long time and uh, actually in that helmet I did have a uh, formula B we called it here in the US crash and the other car actually left a tire mark on top of the helmet. Uh, knocked me out, didn't kill me, which is a good thing. I think that's probably the ultimate test. Are you dead? Nope, okay, next question. So uh, that was uh, <laughs> that was kind of a testament to Bell, and I've been, I've been very partial to them, although I do have other types of helmets, but uh, Bell and I do have a history. And uh, so, that's what I'm trying out. I'm gonna see how this works. I wanna, I wanna hear the sound with the GoPro Hero Silver 4 
and I want to see how jittery it is on a chim mount. I thought it was, I had it mounted on the top of the helmet, or I had one mounted on the top of the helmet a while back, and I thought that was unacceptably uh, jittery. So we'll see, we'll see how this does. I think the one, not the one thing, but one of the things that the GoPro Hero 6 does uh, remarkably well is that it does dampen the video quite a bit, uh, or at least the oscillations and things. So that's a uh, that's a real plus for that particular camera. With uh, you got to you got to give it minuses, and I hate to keep saying this because I think they're they're making great products. I again, I'd like to be a fly on the wall as to the product considerations that made that external adapter necessary and I'm sure there was uh, some technical considerations or something that uh, did in, ca in fact cause that to be so but I I'd sure like to have heard of them I don't know what they are but uh, that's that so this morning's mission I don't know how long we'll record all this or if we'll record all this but I want to put a little video up this morning's mission I'm heading over to Mordo, Mordo, Moto Forza in a beautiful suburban Escondidos Highway that runs along the side of the mountains. Go over to Mordo Forza and visit them in their new facility, which is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And uh, talk to them. They have just uh, sent me a communication. They are affiliated in some way with uh, Grand Prix Motorcycles in San Diego, which is where I bought Tony Thunder the redoubtable 2017 Aprilia Tuono factory and uh, I believe that if I have them do my service that I won't a piss off Grand Prix and be uh, excuse me that's kind of strong words make Grand Prix mad at me uh, and be my uh, warranty of course will stay valid and, and in full force so just check on a couple things and then casually I want to mention to them about maybe setting up the sag on this machine although I don't feel quite honestly I don't feel strictly speaking it's necessary this thing just handles like it's on rails it's really remarkable and uh, secondarily I'm still casually flirting with the idea of that race ECU and the uh, blipless blipper blipless blipper or a blipping blipper downshift do you hear that so uh, I'm still casually flirting with the idea of changing out that exhaust can and uh, I want to test them on the idea of it and uh, also discuss uh, this whole race ECU thing uh, my I've been down a lot of modifications, uh, several of them involving louder exhausts and have, uh, I've actually lived to regret the decision on a couple of occasions because, uh, now this is not so much with motorcycles but with cars, but one of the side effects of cars is you get uh, this uh, droning in the interior of the car and what you like for the first day you put it on you spend a lot of money you like it for the first day and then uh, in three days you feel like someone has located a large timpani inside your eardrum and you just can't stand the thing <laughs> so I've been down that road I don't want louder I wouldn't mind a little more um, tone a little deeper tone and some of them I've heard sound like they're a little bit of a deeper tone so I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind that hey here we go kids did a little stop there and uh, quite interested to see see about that possibility <clears throat> right now I'm in track mode wahoo and uh, so far, uh, not like the uh, Tuono needed any more throttle response. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's like this thing in rain mode will blow away probably 80% of the machines on the road. 
put it in track mode and that is going to up to maybe 90% of the machines on the road so it's not like you got to do that but uh, hey you got all those modes you got to play with them and I played with the traction control and all that stuff just a little bit not a lot again I think that uh, this machine has such towering capabilities and this rider has such minimal capabilities that uh, I don't think I'm kicking in or I'm getting in a position very often where I'm going to be kicking in the uh, uh, traction control systems very often on this machine. So, but I'm toying with the idea and I want to talk to him about it. I don't know that I'll do it. I want to talk to him about it. And uh, I still have to do the big windscreen. I know you guys are saying, come on, Gary, put that on. It's been sitting in my garage. It actually, shamefully, I have to admit, it has dust on it. Shamefully, it's got dust on it. And you shouldn't buy something like that if you're gonna let it sit in the corner and gather dust. But uh, I just have life, life intervenes. So I just haven't had the time to knock the front end of this uh, clamshell fairing off. Hope the sound comes through. I'm running directly into the wind. It seems like there's a uh, direct offshore wind here. Hope the sound does make it through, but it is a glorious day. It's in the mid high 60s. Somebody tell me what that means in uh, centigrade metric. Because I don't know. I guess I could figure it out. I'm gonna say 14, 15, 12, anyway, in that range. And uh, it's just cool enough that you're not sweating. It can get awful hot in San Diego, but it's just cool enough. You're not sweating GT3. A little more newer model than my old uh, GT3 out of 2007. Uh, just cool enough you're not sweating and uh, perfect for the machine and the rider. I mean, I think the Tuona would revel in these kind of temps. I don't know how well they thought about them being used out in 90 plus degree temperatures, um, but I think it'll revel in these temperatures. The famous Del Dios Highway. How cool is this, ladies and gentlemen? So you can say it, yes, I am lucky to live back up in here. This stage of my life, very, very lucky. It won't come out on the camera, but out there in the distance is a little Alfa Romeo, 1960s Disco Volante, or Duetto, I think they called them. Disco Volante is Italian for flying saucer. <laughs> And uh, those are just gorgeous little cars, little 1600cc twin cam four-cylinder motors. I think at the end they were two liters and uh, little rev happy things, four valves per cylinder. Just love to uh, rev those up and uh, the castings on them were beautiful, really works of art. You ask me how I know all this is uh, A, I was around back then, <laughs> and B, there were two motors that we used in uh, Sports Car Club of America uh, Formula B, two general motors. There were a couple other more obscure ones, I think. But the uh, most used, the most common, was based on an English Ford four cylinder block with a uh, an aluminum double overhead cam head that was bolted to the top of it with an aluminum front housing that housed the water pump and the chain drive to the camshafts. And that motor, there's the dam, by the way. If it's not one damn thing, it's another. And uh, that motor was just uh, bulletproof. That thing, uh, would rev and rev and rev. It was a steel block, five mains, and the motor was very stiff uh, in the chassis and uh, would take a ton of revs. And, and that thing was modified all the way up towards uh, 
1500 cc's as I remember was the class displacement limit and that thing was modified all the way up towards around 200 horsepower uh, I think mine was claimed to produce about 165 it was carbureted uh, Weber carburetors 45 DCOE for you trivia nuts carburetors uh, later on they became fuel injected and uh, really uh, were uh, uh, redoubtable machines so the other motor that was quite common was the motor right out of that little disco volante up there which was the aluminum block uh, Alfa Romeo 1600 cc four valves uh, twin cam the uh, the Ford motor was two valve hemispherical combustion chambers two valve but huge valves uh, I believe the Alpha was uh, four valves, but that aluminum block uh, was, uh, okay, let's just say that occasionally it was an issue. All right, see you guys. And uh, I have, my memory uh, says I've seen one of them uh, saw itself in half actually on the dyno <laughs> so, uh, and a couple pop on the road pop in racing including one that I was following which blew up about 100 yards in front of me and showered me with all kinds of oil and crud and bits of metal popping all over all over me I still have some scars on that old helmet to show it as a matter of fact and uh, that had to do with the fact that that aluminum block was not as stiff as the steel block that we had in the uh, FOMO Co. in the English Ford uh, four-cylinder. So it was just uh, lighter, but you know, there's no free lunch. So that's that trip down memory lane, and that's what we're going to do today. That's what we're looking at uh, going to do today. I'm just going to, it seems I got another pickup truck in front of me here, so I'm going to run out of uh, my free space and I'll be stuck behind this guy for a while. So let's just sit back and enjoy the road for a bit, shall we? <laughs> 